طالب العلم أيا طالب العلم قم لتنم فإن الزمان انقضى وانصرم فكن ما حييت ضنينا به فظنك بالوقت عين الكرم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله I hope you all well, dear viewers. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Another blessed day in the month of Ramadan. And I'm joined by my, by my two dear brothers, Farhan from Australia and Basak from Medina Munawwara. I ask Allah Azza wa to make this, uh, this sitting a beneficial one and to accept it all from us. So today, inshallah, we're going to talk and discuss about a topic. And I think, you know, this topic we're all in dire need of hearing about this topic and being reminded of it. So Brother Baisak, if you can begin, inshallah. Allah musta'an. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Amma ba'da. It's a topic that we want to speak about and I want to sort of just get the listeners' attention and what we want to achieve and what we want to avoid in this in this uh, in this small sitting that we have and that is we want to speak about this not because of it's something that will get people's attention or because it will it's interesting to people or this is something that we want to sort of put our faces forward in this none of this because at the end of the day whatever we put to the people and whatever we say and especially since we're in the month of ramadan and two of us are fasting but Far- farhan is not fasting because of the different timelines <laughs> It's not a hit, no. it's 12 o'clock, it's 10 o'clock at night, يعني, this is... Okay, okay, so you say, so, so you brother Steve... Don't brother, don't know Don. If you brother Steve eat and drink, you know, know that he's in a different timeline, actually. <laughs> Look, we're in the month of Ramadan, and we are going to be held accountable with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And what we say in terms of oppression regarding the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us to account, and we will come on Yawm Al-Qiyamah facing these people. So we want to speak about this as of something that we don't want for ourselves and sometimes some things we don't want for the West, for the Western students. And it's the topic of qila waqal. Such and such and sheikh said this, such and such sheikh said that, such and such student did this, such and such student did that. We're refuting this student and refuting that student, refuting this sheikh and refuting that sheikh, taking the, the kalam of this sheikh who's spoken as a general term and applying to someone who's specific, say, you know, and so on and so on. We, we, you know, this is well known to the, to all the students of knowledge of, you know, how this takes. However, <clears throat> we want to speak to the brothers and sisters who are beginning their knowledge and who are thinking of seeking of knowledge and to give them an insight of the dangers of this. Because this is something that has really detrimental effects and we will speak about these detrimental effects. Farhan, you know what detrimental means, yeah? Yeah, and it's, it's a, it, it is used in the English language, and we do speak English down here in Australia. Alhamdulillah. Barakallah. 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 I'm trying my best to behave, Akhi. I'm trying my best. Habibakallah. <laughs> Look, we want, to avoid, we, want to, we want to avoid mistakes for future generations that maybe we would have fallen into. Myself, I'm sp- going to speak about myself, not about Abdullah and Farhan, but things that I might have fallen into. And I wish if I could go back, I would do things differently. And inshallah, I want to, I want to speak to Farhan first and I want to ask him some questions of regarding some of the things, first of all, that maybe he fell into, things that he sees in this generation that he's with and things that we can really do to improve the situation for students to come be eaten in light of Allah. And when we say students, we're not talking about just men. We're talking about men and women. And we're talking about men and women who have fallen into this. Men and women, inshallah, who are going to take the, you know, the pole flag of Islam in the future, be eaten in Allah. And even especially in the English-speaking world. Since the English-speaking world, as I see it, is the more dominating sort of scene in the West rather than the other languages. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Bismillah, Farhan. Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Um, personally, um, yeah, and if we want to start off with the things that we might have fall, we, we fell into, Allah salamu alayhi we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Firstly, initially in our talab, when we were starting on, um, we had a bit of a, a background on certain issues, certain contentious issues, and certain people, figures that 
we knew and we respected and we wanted to um, we wanted to uphold يعني, certain positions and that was something that I felt and now I still feel that now when we do do things it's very uh, not it, it, it's disingenuous يعني, we go into a, into it to whenever we speak to other brothers whenever we speak to anything it's I'm going to prove my point to you I don't care about the truth I am already on the truth and you are on battle and that's just from the beginning from the get go that's just that's just how it is for that is something that we fell into you know, let's just be blatant but alhamdulillah early on some one of the mashayikh caught on to it and yani indirectly we we were advised in in the best way of this is not the the mannerisms of a talib in and right now, you should not be talking about these issues. You should not be doing these things. And this was like, I'm talking about first year. First year. Ma'ahad or kulia? Ma'ahad. So you're in the Arabic school, you're in the Arabic you know, language school? In the Arabic Institute, and we, we're barely speaking Arabic, and we're talking about this sheikh and that sheikh. And, and like, alhamdulillah, I never fell into alhamdulillah, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to protect us. Alhamdulillah, it was never like, Oh, don't go sit with that sheikh or don't go sit with that sheikh. It was more just defending some of the mashayikh. Like when people would say it inside of, like in the classroom, this sheikh said that, that sheikh said this, he said, she said, to get involved in the defense of the mashayikh. It wasn't more like that sheikh, don't sit with him. Alhamdulillah, we never got into that. It wasn't that bad. Walillah, alhamd. But the brothers who were doing that in the, in the ma'ad, in, in the Arabic Institute, they were going, they were, they were class hopping and they were sitting with only their sheikhs and they were only doing certain things. How can you sit with that person? That person is not from the manhaj. How can you sit with that person? That person doesn't have the right aqeedah. And we were just in the defense of some of the mashaykh. And some of the brothers, yeah, and in Asaf al Shadid, they, because of that, uh, they, they, it, the word had kind of spread. And this is something that's another evil thing, subhanAllah is word spreads back home that fulan is on the manhaj of this person and that person and you've never sat with anything, you've never done anything and the only thing is it just it just destroys your name and tarnishes what you're upon. So uh, let's, let's, let, let me understand this correctly. So for, for example, I'll, I'll apply this to you. So they say for, but this, the word is spread that Farhan is sitting with Sheikh so-and-so and you've never sat with him and you've never taken... Okay, like, like for instance, for instance, I'll tell you what's actually something that happened to me personally. Okay. In my third, in my second year of, of Kulit al-Hadith, when I came back to Australia, word had spread between the mashayikh. I, يعني, this is how I know that it was, it was spread. That Farhan is a madkhali. This was the term. This was the term that was used. And then the, um, يعني, um, so one of the main senior mashayikh sat me down and he said, this is what we've heard. This is what we've heard. One, two, and three. And, yeah, and you have to understand that in Australia, it's a very different dynamic. It's a very different way of seeing things. There's personal issues. There's other types of issues. Anyways, Mahma Khan, the sheikh sat me down and said, this is what's happened. And I said, sheikh, I have not yet even seen sheikh Rabia. I haven't even visited him. I've never seen him. Right? All I say that the sheikh is a sheikh and I don't disrespect him. And I don't talk about him in an evil way. And I don't try to tarnish his name. I respect him as a scholar. Right? I don't say he's a prophet and that every goal that he has is to be accepted and that he is to be accepted blindly and that he has the manzil of the Quran and the Sunnah in anything that he speaks. I don't say that. But if the man is the, someone who spent his life in the juhd of the Sunnah and protecting and preserving the deen, I'm not going to tarnish his name because of a few mistakes. If, if, if you see it as a mistake, right? And the sheikh is like, khalas, that's not an issue. Uh, but it also has reached us, and this is another issue. This is, subhanAllah, another thing. That you sit with sheikh, and this is another name. That I, I hope we, we're okay with dropping names. Yeah, I mean, inshallah, it's, it's fine. But they said that, for instance, we've heard that you've sat and you continue to see sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi al-Madkhal. And I said, sheikh, I love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the sheikh is my neighbor. He lives on the same street as me. We literally live maybe 
يعني six houses if you count the actual houses maybe a hundred meters away from each other of course I'm going to see him of course I'm going to see him you don't have a back exit to, to exit from the back door so nobody sees you with a sheikh yeah, what, what's the required fact, of you just the fact that someone had seen me and I, I and my relationship with the sheikh was يعني, I respect the sheikh he taught me in kulliya he taught me sunan at tirmidhi and I respect oh. him as an alim And I, oh. I, every time I see the sheikh, I would go up and kiss him. I, if I had any questions and I'd see him and yani being his neighbor had certain benefits, subhanAllah. Like I'd see him sometimes in the bakala at like midnight, you know what I mean? Doing grocery shopping. And I'd be asking him questions. I benefit from anyone that I can benefit from because as a talib ilm, you can benefit from whoever's in front of you. As a student of knowledge, and I'm not saying take the good, leave the bad for the awam. With students of knowledge, we can at least go back and research the masaid and go through the lens. But anyways, they said that you pray in his masjid. I was like, that's my local masjid, Akhi. No, Sheikh, that's, my, lo- that's my local masjid. How can you say, I mean, what? I, I'm not meant to pray in my local masjid. And then, and then the, the, the thing that I want to come to is that that happened in Medina and that news traveled all the way back to the Mashayikh in Sydney. SubhanAllah. You know, A continent away, an ocean, and uh, between you is an ocean and a continent. Yeah, and he, just to think that, yeah, and you, no, I don't, me personally, that was like, come on, come on, where's the insult? Where's the insult? Where's the justice? For, alhamdulillah, we never fell into the whole thing of like, you know, continuously trying to, we never got into, alhamdulillah, I, I, I hope, I hope, inshallah. We never got into slander. We not, never got into you know, things like that. We were just defending a lot of the time. And and sometimes, and this is another thing, sometimes we defended the wrong people. Now time has shown. And you know this very well, Basak. Yeah? I mean, me and you have had discussions about certain individuals and I was trying yes, to defend them. And, and you, it looks like the time has shown that you were correct, right? But alhamdulillah, in my time, and yeah, I mean, we were just trying to defend Mashaya, right? People that we've benefited from. But the thing that I look back now, I regret all that time I was spending in talking about other people and looking at other people rather than focusing in my studies. That time we were there, we were supposed to be studying. We didn't get anything from it. We didn't benefit from our time in that when we were speaking about that. It was literally things that were trivial. Trivial masal. And the abdijiyat, the actual things that we were supposed to be studying, gone. We wasted time. We could have been memorizing. We could have been doing taqsil ilm. And now, till now, I still feel a naqs in my, in my ilm. Till now. That I, I feel like there are certain things that I should have been focusing on, that I should have yani, really buckled down in the ma'ad. I was wasting my time, akhi. Nas'Allah, salamu al-afiyah. Shaykh Abdullah, yani, come on, like, we've but, both... Be, 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 no, no, I'm going to move on to Abdullah. But I want to ask you, I want to ask you this question. I want to hmm. ask you this question. Why is it not something that you would recommend or you would advise for a student, for a beginning, a beginner of student of knowledge uh, to start with, to busy himself with? Why, why is it? Why is it? Look, Two I reasons. don't know. Two reasons. I need you Two to reasons. teach me. Two reasons. For, for me personally, this is what I've learned. One, your time is يعني, the most valuable asset that you have in your life. And you can be using your time In anything, and the thing that you, there will be, يعني, let's, let's be honest, there is a certain benefit in, in studying rudud, right? You are able to take some benefits as this is a principle of Ahlul Sunnah, this is a qaida, this is, يعني, you do learn certain things, but that knowledge is up here where you haven't built up to get to that, to that level, right? So that, that, that Uh, beginning the beginning blocks the basic foundational knowledge that you need to study and in in the arabic institute it's the arabic language right um i still feel a naqs in my arabic till now wallahi till now uh and yeah يعني, i regret not going completely into it and being free from just anything that wasn't about that not just ila wa qal there's other things as well other masail fiqhiyah other things that yeah يعني, uh, that, that really I shouldn't have been taking. So that's the first thing. Your time is of essence and you should be using your time in the best way. Right? Let's okay. just agree on that. The second thing is it creates a hardness in the heart. Wallahi, to follow the mistakes and to follow the things of the mashayikh and to follow the 
uh, the, 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 the matters between different sheikhs, it creates some sort of what, what do you mean? What do you mean by following the mistakes? What do you mean? When someone tells you Fulan, a great sheikh of Medina, said this about another sheikh that you hold in high regard, and you now you hold both of them in high regard, naturally you're going to feel something to one of the other. One or the other. You're going to feel naturally as a human being, it will create something. That in itself is, is not something that you want to do with the mashayikh, right? Because we have to have haiba for our mashayikh. We have to have, يعني, we have to look up to them, ijlal, ta'zim. We have to make them on a pedestal, right? And when you do that, يعني, and a lot of the times, right, when you do that, you're not looking at yourself, you're looking at others. And that's something scary because, like, if you look at every single scholar throughout Islamic history from the time of Rasulullah, after the time, like, literally from Abu Bakr all the way. Uh, to literally right now What's the date? Today is the 24th of April Right till right now Every single scholar Because they weren't the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Would have had a mistake And if you chase up every mistake of every person You're going to have this hardness in your heart Right? You're not going to respect them in the best way You're not going to have يعني, You're not going to have that ta'zim of the ulama Of the salaf Right? Because they've all fell into mistakes. And you're going to fall into mistakes. Yeah, and you're not going to have haiba for the knowledge that you have. And that, 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 um, and I found, and this was one of the advices of one of my, one of my mashayikh, after he'd seen that I'd fell into um, going through, and I, I love reading about this stuff. I love reading about, for instance, aqidah issues in certain books where some scholars have got certain things wrong. Right? And it's just, it's a, it's a thing that I've, I, I enjoy reading in because it helps me Found like make now. I'm talking about now, not now, not, not then. Not this is like after six years. Yani, it helps me understand how Ahl Sunnah used to uh, deal with these issues. Anyways, in in all ask in all yani, whatever happened, the Sheikh said to, the way to get that ijlal back for those mashayikh and those ulama is to read the seer of the ulama, and to read books like Sir Alam and Nubala. And Wallahi, when you read books like Sir Alam and Nubala, and when you read things in there like and he, it really, really it amazes you because you get this sense of these are our scholars, these are our salaf, these are the people that we need to. And it's even people that يعني, you have intrinsically from a young, younger age, you've gone through it and you might have had a certain يعني, question mark around this name, right? Like, for instance, for instance, uh, Abul Hassan Ashari, Mathanan, right? Rahimahullah. <laughs> And you, you, if you go through the seerah, all those question marks and the shubu hat, they go out of the window. Right? Because you, yes, you think the sha'ira today are like this. Right? Where he is free from everything that they've done. Of course, especially when, especially matters of aqidah issues that are very core and fundamental to Ahl al-Sunnah. 100%. 100%. Yani, so these things, when you go into the lives of the seerah, of the ulama, of the salaf, it's unbelievable and it gets you that that thing back. So anyone, I, you know, that's a you know, tip, anyone who has fallen into that to read this, the biographies of this of the Salaf because Wallahi, in it is so many fawaid, so many beautiful lessons that we can take. Subhanal Khalid. So those are my two things, time and, uh, um, the, and the effect that it has on a heart. Zafla yeah. um, Sheikh Abdullah, I want to move on to you. Barakallahu fika. But before we do, I wanted to speak about uh, something else. Qadar Allah Shafal, I forgot at the beginning of the of the you know the talk is that what I wanted all of us sort of to mention one benefit of Ramadan that we that that you know we've we've applied you know we've, either we've applied or we've seen other people apply and it's really really benefited us and it's something that's aided you and increased your iman. You know, Alhamdulillah, there are plenty of talks about you know the virtues of Ramadan. And what is required of Ramadan, but however, a practical, you know, implication that we can do, that we can so that we can benefit the people. Farhan, do you want to? Do you want? Do you want to speak? I, know, I need, I need, I need to hear Sheikh Abdullah's voice. Barakallahu fika. Barakallahu fika. Khalas, we'll come back to you then. Sheikh Abdullah. Barakallahu fika. Before I do, I think it's good, Basak, if you can start off, so it will, it will help me kind of get. Yeah, Allah. I'm, I'm benefiting by listening. Allah, Allah, Allah. Um, there's something that I wanted to speak about, and inshallah, I'll come to that. 
and it's the term of labeling people and labeling Muslims and it's something that's really really dangerous and labeling people and Muslims to Mashaikh and that that word and that label almost becomes a slander you know in in, in the general community and, and especially when it comes to Sheikh Rabia or the Qabila that he's from saying so and so is Madkhali and so and so is this so and so is that but like this is something that we have to be very 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 careful of at the end of the day it's it's slander that the scholars have rejected and the scholars of the, like like Sheikh Salah Fawzan have spoken about this or Jami and Sheikh Salah Fawzan has spoken about Sheikh Muhammad Aman Jami rahimahullah and has defended him and this is something that we need to be as tullab that we need to be as far as far from from these things as possible then and especially you know when it comes to the general masses you know look my brother and my sister what you're going to say about somebody you will be held accountable for and if you associate a name with them and that's to a tribe or to a country or to a place all these people on yawm al-qiyamah they will come and they will they can take their right from from you so be careful you don't want thousands and thousands and thousands of people be in front of you and allah and yawm al-qiyamah asking asking allah to, to you know for their rights so be careful of that and um, the, the second thing is uh, regarding the, the the practical steps of ramadan inshallah I want to speak about that and Abdullah bi idhn Allah tabarak wa ta'ala you can take it on from there then I can ask you some questions is that okay Jazakallah khairan ahsan Allah ilayk um, one practical step that I would that I've seen make make a big difference in my life and other people especially you know in my local masjid and in jami'a in my time that I was there with the brothers is that sitting in the uh, sitting after each salah doing your Adhkar after the salah, whilst you're in the masjid, not moving and sitting down, just taking that two, three, you know, three minutes, let's say, to do your ayatul kursi, to do your tasbihat, and whatever of adhkar that is legislated in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for you to do that. The next thing is, the next thing is, the next sort of, just a little bit step of that, of that doing your morning and evening adhkar in the masjid. Subhanallah, for me, this, is, this makes a big difference. First of all, I, I complete my ifkar. Second of all, of the virtue of sitting in the masjid and remembering Allah and remembering that the, the, the malaika are making dua for you because you're from the people who, are, who is making dhikr of Allah in the masjid. And then, inshallah, that can aid you, that can aid you on being solid with your ifkar as well. Because sometimes when you go home, you get distracted or you get in the delay or you're, you're moving about and you're doing it, but when you're sitting in the masjid and the sakina, it's completely different and completely, it has a different effect. And inshallah, there's a website that I can sort of refer the brothers and sisters back to, and it's a, a website that, that was worked on by a, a senior brother that I know, student of knowledge, and, and it's called duas.com, D-U-A-S.com. Can you include, can you include that in the, in the link? Duas.com, and there's a section on that website, it's, uh, you know, uh, collection or section it's, it's called you know morning and evening card. so you can go on that on your mobile phone you can open it and go through all the du'as that are authentically you know narrated from the Prophet ﷺ that he would do in his morning and in his evening card, and you can benefit from that and Abdullah we want to shift on to the next uh, topic or the, the main the core topic that we were speaking about um, so my question is for Abdullah obviously the the, U, the UK is very very different or UK is very very different to Australia to America and Canada and the other rest is uh, speak English speaking world. You guys are the source of the problems, boys. Allah <laughs> I want to move the spotlight away from us. I'm gonna get to you after this after me, it's you, Yahi. I'm Kurdish. I'm escaping with this Kurdish card every time, Yahi. <laughs> so look, Abdullah, you're in the UK. And you're in London, and obviously London is very, very different to Newcastle. Our the, 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 that was seen in scenario and the environment is very, very different. Look, Abdullah, when you started see uh, before that, sorry, we don't want to do that. What's your advice? What's things that you you know for yourself if you could go back that you would correct? Second of all, what is your advice for Muslim brothers and sisters that are inshallah who are interested in seeking knowledge? And who hear about these issues? What's your advice for them? So first of all, we start with what's your advice to yourself? What would you? What would Abdullah change about himself 
you know, could he if he if he had the opportunity to go back again? Okay, uh, Rahim. To be honest, um, it's not too different to what uh, Brother Farhan mentioned. Okay, we had a, a similar kind of uh, background in terms of this specific topic. And what happened to me, I kind of fell into the same thing where I was, in the beginning, I was very staunch and I was very, very much, I had little understanding. And Allah understand, we still need to obviously learn a bit, learn as much as we can more because I felt like I wasted my time. When I was, forget even Jamia, before I came to the Jamia, when I was growing up in London, the area I lived in specifically, it was a very toxic area where, you know, when you're practicing the religion and, you know, you're from the the Madhab of Ahl Sunnah and Sunnah Jama'ah and you try to your best to practice religion, you find that everyone around you is like, you feel this sort of um, sense that everything is not allowed in the religion. And Alhamdulillah, it didn't affect me as much as I know it affected some of my close friends. Some of my close friends today, I think, they're not here in terms of practicing. They don't, they're not interested in their religion. And I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say that it's, it's, it's not, of course, it's, at the end of the day, everyone makes a choice. But you have things around you in your environment that affect you and cause you to kind of be put off certain things. What do That's I mean cool. by that? Is that when you're growing up, obviously, growing up in London, you're growing up in London, I grew up in London, uh, wherever you may be in the West, you're exposed to so many things. But of course, you have a certain way you live your life. And then obviously, you come into the religion and you start practicing the religion. And Allah guides you. So of course, when you start practicing the religion and you hear, this is not Allah, this is Haram, this is not Allah, this is Haram, this is not Allah, this is Haram, you feel as if you're in some sort of box where you kind of, you can't do anything. Okay? Now this, in the beginning, I didn't understand. I just, I, I, I literally did not understand but Hadzallah Khair remember specifically my uh, my older brother, he used to advise me to not kind of fall into these things of talking about this person or refuting that person. But because obviously I was caught up in the environment, the community around me was, you know, just doing that. I never, alhamdulillah, and I asked Allah Azza wa to forgive me if I did, but I don't recall that I ever actually, you know, went and spoke about this person or slandered that person or that island or that specific individual. But just like what Farhan mentioned, I would defend. Okay, I would defend. So when I came to obviously Medina, it's a completely different, you know, <laughs> it's a different ball game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Completely different ball game. It's like, obviously I expected and I had expectations thinking that Medina, you know, going to that kind of place, you would never, ever, ever experience what I experienced in London. And that's what I thought. And I think a lot of people up until today think the same thing. We're not saying it's, it's the same thing. It happens the same kind of way, but it's a, like you said, for time, it's a different ball game. So when I was there, and I'll tell you in terms of that, which I fell into that I regret, I kind of fell into this kind of thing where, and actually, like, like I said, it's a thing where I'm not going to say, I'm not going to be held accountable for it. And it's not my fault. Of course, without a doubt, it would. And it is my fault. But it's a thing where because of those things that are happening around you and the people that you're hanging around, you kind of just fall into it. It's like a thing where you just dissolve into this actual kind of uh, the way or this, this kind of methodology or this path. And it, what I mean by that is judging others, number one, Okay, that's that's very very a thing where I definitely, without a doubt, fell into judging others just by looking at someone, or oh, because this, or because that, or because who they're sitting with, or are they wearing a thobe? And actually, this is this is all to do with jahan, without a doubt, to do with jahan. And and the thing is, it was very very much prevalent even in London up until today. It is sadly, um, and actually, you know, before I even go into more what um, what occurred. I want to mention and highlight that I think, and I, you know, I told you too when I spoke to you, uh, you two brothers, that it's not mentioned and it's not highlighted these things within the community. People don't highlight and mention these things. So I believe at the end of the day, it's always going to continue until people actually start to speak about it and to use proofs and for and Sunnah to speak about that this is not the religion of the Islam, you know. So anyway, going back to the the topic that when you were there, when I was there, it's like I thought, yeah, okay, I'm in Medina now, I'm there. So you kind of get, number one, can, um, you kind of fall into a thing where you judge others because a certain person doesn't look a certain way or he doesn't have the certain um, some characteristic. The second one was you defend individuals, okay? And you don't even know what you're defending. And actually, this is not reality. You don't even know what you're defending, but you just have to defend because, yeah, I mean, you know, this is this is part of my kind of group or circle that I hang around with. You know, well, these are people that I kind of look up to. And this, actually, is a very dangerous thing. You know, it's almost as if you're, you're doing something that you don't even know what you're doing or why you're doing it, but you're just doing it because you don't have to. So these are the things that I personally, uh, personally uh, regret doing when I first, you know, my first, and these are obviously the first stages, like my first couple of four years when I was in Medina. 
And then eventually, I don't know what it was exactly, but I obviously Tawfiq of Allah Azza wa Jal, like, I kind of started to slowly mature as an individual myself, you know, work on my own kind of thing. And also at the same time, I started to see more of the Mashaykh. And after, you know, you know what? I, I think you two agree. When you start to learn the Arabic language and you have the basic to actually sit in a lesson and understand 60, 70 percent, you benefit more from the Mashaykh. Of course, without a doubt. So when that stage kind of happened where I was able to actually sit in a lesson and you see the dealings on the Mu'aminat of the Ulama, you realize mm. this is very different to that which I was kind of exposed to in the West, to that which I believed was correct. And that obviously kind of changed me and how I was and how I used to deal with people, you know, in terms of obviously how I was in my household and just generally around me. So then you start to realize when you, when you make them trips back in the holidays, to, you know, when I used to go back to London, you realize how much of, how, 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 how much of, you know, um, the events that have occurred before and they're still occurring now, how much they haven't changed or just got to become worse. And also how much, uh, how toxic, I should say, how toxic the environment is in the West in terms of the Muslims and how they deal with each other. You know? SubhanAllah. So that's the... Look, now, you, now you've went to the second question. What would your advice be for brothers and sisters who are beginning to practice and who might fall into or who, who are in that sort of environment? What would your advice, what's your advice for these brothers? Personally, personally, I would advise to, you know, someone that wants to seek knowledge. It just doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you want to come to study abroad or just generally want to stay within the place that you live. And you want to seek knowledge, you want to get close to Allah. Ask. The first thing, obviously, should be ikhlas. Someone should be sincere. This is something that I, I believe personally is very, very important. You know, it's very, very important for someone to be sincere in that which they're doing. And the second thing is, obviously, they should try the utmost best to not waste time. Because wasting time, subhanAllah, these are from the Tqila Waqal, talking about this shaykh, talking about that shaykh, saying he's a madakhila, he's a, he's a wahhabi, all, or any, whatever you want to accuse people of. It just all goes back down to wasting time. And I believe that the more someone wastes their time, then the more they're going to regret it. In a day when the, the regret would not benefit anyone. You know, and this obviously is something that we should all realize, that wasting time is a severe matter. Because time is precious. It's more expensive than gold and silver. Time is very, very precious. And if one obviously wastes their time, that time that you've wasted, it's never going to be replaced. Whereas, if, you're, whereas if someone has gold or silver and it's, you know, they lose it or whatever, then it's, you can always replace it. Materialistic things, but time can't. It's so sad that we indulge ourselves in qila wa qal or this person or that person, just like Brother Fahan mentioned, when they follow the mistakes of mashayikh or individuals. And it's like, the more, like it's, you know, when you, I understand if we were all promised Jannah, if we were promised Jannah and we do certain things, it's like, okay, I'm promised Jannah. But it's like even the, those 10 companions that were promised Jannah, they were promised Jannah, but yet they were still vigilant and they were scared, you know, that they're going to be from the Munafiq. They will stand each thing that they will do. And it's like us, we walk the earth talking about this person, you know, finding the mistakes of that person as if we're promised gender and we're far from it. So the, the thing that I would advise myself first and foremost, and all those that are listening, is to not waste time. We should all be vigilant with our time and we should all make sure that each and everything we do, we make sure we don't regret. So how can you do that? By making sure before you open your mouth and utter a word, you think about what you're going to say. And this is this should be the hell of a believer, of a Muslim, that we think before we speak. Just like Prophet Sallallahu said, man kana yu'minu billahi wa yu'minu fal yaqul khayran awli yasmut. The one that believes in Allah in the last day, then he should utter, he should what? He should say something good. If not, then he should be quiet. He should shut his mouth, be quiet. Because it's like, if I'm, gonna, if not, if I'm not going to say something, or if Farhan's not going to say something, or Basak, or he or her, whoever it is, of benefit, then we should just keep quiet. It's better for us. That way we don't have to regret it. Yawm al-Qiyamah. The time when there would be no opportunity to, to go back. So that's can I, can I just before, before Basak jumps in, and we got to ask, we got to hit him up with a bunch of questions there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one, thing, one thing that this does, one, one thing that, look at him trying to hide his face. We can see you, Habibi. You're not hiding away today. One thing that I've seen that it does when you follow the يعني, mistakes of certain groups, certain people, it creates animosity between brothers. Yeah. And the thing that it does between the brothers and the community, and this is what's destroyed, yeah, not destroyed completely, but this is what's put on, like, 
has been shooting down the da'wah of Salafiyya, Atharia, whatever you want to call it, Ahlul Hadith, Ahlul Sunnah, Al Jama'a, yani, Firqatul Nat, whatever name you want to call it. But the animosity between two brothers who are closest to each other, yani, the madkhali, yani, I quote unquote madkhali, yani, how people use it as a derogatory term, the brother who's usually calling him that, in aqeedah, he's the same. He believes in all of the asma and the sifat just the same way that he does. He believes in all the masail of iman just the same that he does. He might differ with him on one, two, three, ten, fifteen, twenty masail in manhaj. In manhaj. Not in aqeedah. But I'm sorry, bro, just, to cut, just to cut, just for the viewers that don't understand the terminology, what's the difference between aqeedah and manhaj? I'll let Basak do that. He's from Kulit al-Dawah. <laughs> Allah Hussain, bro, forget forget this man. Are you guys gonna get me in trouble, man? I'm gonna get all like <laughs> forget this. So I'm gonna get all you know why? Because it's very very important. A lot of people don't understand this. It's like they don't understand these these things. Basak, bro, come on. No way, Akhi. No, I'm not getting all that. You get all that, Akhi. You can. You're from Australia. You take it, Akhi. You're very cool, far away. <laughs> one is am and one is khas. One is, يعني, is 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 the broad term, and one is. The Masail of Aqeedah is basically, basically the six pillars of Iman, right? And Manhaj covers a lot more, right? But when we, with like, for instance, how we deal with, for instance, deviants and how we deal with uh, people and how we يعني, look at, uh, for instance, the way of dealing with, uh, يعني, I don't want to go into every single, every yeah, single summarize. How, how, like, we deal with mis- how we deal with mistakes of Muslims that are not aqidah based issues. Yeah. So, no, but that would all come under manhaj yes. issues, right? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get at. That it's not aqidah issues. And the generally, generally, of course, the manhaj is very important to have the manhaj of, of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah. But if the person has the aqidah the same as you, right? Not like the Ash'ari or the Maturidi or anyone else. Who doesn't, he denies the asma of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one way or another, doing either ta'wil or tashbih, whatever he does, right? This person is closer to you because he's even in manhaj issues on 95%, he is the exact, like as if you took the paper, put it on like the copy, and you've come out with the exact same answers. He differs with you on 20 masail, akhi, and you're rubbishing him as if he's worse than a kafir. And that's Akhi Wallahi Farhan, that's what that, that just it, it saddens the heart, Akhi, because that's this, the sad reality. That someone would literally, just like you said, for example, what happened to you happened to me, okay? And it's like because of the fact that you went to Shah Muhammad bin Hadi, or you prayed in his masjid, you gave him salam, a person in Australia now, because he's heard that, and he, they treat that sheikh that has sought knowledge or been teaching for as long as we've probably been alive, okay? As long as we've been alive, like, because we were in the same class, bro, he taught, he taught the both of us. And it's like they'll treat him as if he's as if he's zindiq, as if he's bro, that, bro. Wallahi, wallahi, I've actually heard someone say that he is worse, يعني, than the person who was in charge of Syria at one point in time in the last five yeah. ten years. Wallahi, he they was said that, Bashar al-Assad. No, no, no. يعني, the the IS, the state that came in. Yeah, oh. he, he he had the... worse of an impact. <laughs> he had worse of an impact on the Islamic ummah. Then that person. Think about you say someone is like a kharji. Yeah, and you just think about the mentality that it takes that you're saying that someone who differs, say he's shadi, say that he is harsh, say that he's made mistakes, say whatever you need to say, but to say that he's had the worst effect on the Muslim ummah. Come on, there's just no insaf. There's no. And you know what it is? Sorry to cut you this. It's like the way they will treat you now. They will walk past you and not even give you salam. And if a kafir or someone was to walk past them, they'll go and say, Hello, how are you doing? Your case. And it's like, Bro, this. but just, just, and look, we do this to ourselves as well, like straight up, because, like, especially in Saudi, and this is something that happens in Saudi a lot. We, 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 yeah, I'm not trying to bag out Saudi Arabia or anything like that, right? But because every one of the mashayikh is generally on Salafiyya and Tabat, yeah. one mistake looks gharib, it looks ajib. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's highlighted. It's put on another mag- under a microscope. Like a single mistake, it looks like it's huge because everyone else is on on a certain on a certain way, and they're all pretty much ninety nine percent. So one one difference makes it like how can he do that? Do you know what I mean? And so 
يعني of course like look this is all يعني human and and emotional and things that are يعني they're human beings right even our mashayikh they, they we're not saying that we have to take everything that they've done uh, and apply it into our lives even when they've made mistakes and we have to call a spade a spade akhi you know yeah. what i mean if someone had kalam that was shadid we have to call, we have to say fulan sometimes he was يعني, harsh in his statements but does yeah. that mean i have to rubbish 50 years of work and us akhi you know that you know how sad it is the fact that i understand I'm, it I'm, i'm so sorry but the, the, i just wanted to just finish off on the thing that يعني, to treat that person who you say is for instance يعني, he follows a particular sheikh is he closer to you than an ashari or a maturidi or a khariji who's your dam is halal to him your blood يعني, he, he wants to he wants to kill you he thinks you're he thinks you're a kafir is that person closer to you or, or further away from you yeah does this person go does this person go to a grave and worship the grave does he go and make dua to this grave does he do all of the things that you hold as these are the tenets of islam that brother does too he is as yani the brotherhood of islam it just goes down the drain completely down the drain there's no ukhuwa wala shi because he is now not just a deviant he is a dajjal bro and when he becomes a dajjal then oi i i swear they have better interactions with the ashaira and better interactions with grave worshipers than they have with these brothers who differ with them on manhaj issues that are just yani like drops of the ocean compared to what they agree with and it's unbelievable akhi unbelievable you, you, you know the concerning thing there's two things that i want to sort of highlight the concerning thing is that we even have to consider that that we How, how would you treat an Ashari? How would you treat a Maturidi? How would you treat a Khariji or a Quburi compared to that? That's the concerning thing. That, that, you know, subhanAllah, that's the concerning thing. The second thing is, Farhan, you said something and I, and I want to sort of make a ta'aliq on it. You said it may be 15 or 20 issues in Manhaj. Akhi, 15, 20 minute issues in Manhaj, that's a lot. We're talking about maybe sometimes disagreeing upon a sheikh. One just one. Three. Just that's one. It. That's wallahi, honestly. Like, like you said about Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi and regarding Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi, You know, we have to give it in self and we have to say, you know, what has been said about, you know, what has been said about him. I've not came across anybody who sh- the Sheikh has taught that is except that they've said that, you know, so many good things about the Sheikh and about his ilm and about his teaching and how much they benefited from the Sheikh during that class. And subhanAllah, they, we they, both they, studied they, with him. Me and, me yeah, and, no, me and I, Abdullah, we were in the same class. Yeah, did you do Tirmidhi? Uh, we, we, we did Tirmidhi with him. We did Tirmidhi with him. Yeah. MashaAllah, Tabarakal. I know a lot of brothers who, who, are, who have... being with him and whether they agree with him or disagree mm. with him they've always said thing. the same that's thing that's a different thing 100% that's exactly right I don't agree with the sheikh on every mas'ala that he had even the mas'ala that he took in class like for instance living in the west right we took those mas'ala <laughs> it was like oi four lessons and I thought like wow I need to start getting my bags packed bro this is <laughs> <laughs> honestly he was like ripping this is good on this one, he was he was like mashallah he was well researched the, right? the stuff he gave for him they were they were deep there's no coming back from him uh... <laughs> wait and i'm I, and i literally i went up to him I'm like sheikh where do i go where do i go i can't go back to india it's not a muslim country i don't know the country i can't do it if i go to fiji bro half of those people don't do anything yeah i mean then like most of them the only thing of the deen they know is the milad maulid and nabi that's it you're done for the rest of the year Khalas, you don't need to do anything else right in they fiji. might pray then yeah in fiji they might pray maghrib and that's a mad thing you know what i mean like you're you're on another level habibi you're praying maghrib bro i'm telling you most of the the, the continent the, the jazeera the island is jahal and it's more يعني يعني اهل السنه the small community that's growing well alhamdulillah but i can't go there because whenever we go any of those countries you're not seeing as i haven't been there since يعني I, i left when i was tw- يعني when i was four i'm i'm maybe three but i haven't been there in 20 years so i don't know anything about fiji i don't know the culture about fiji i don't know the culture of india i've been to india more than i've been to fiji and i was born in fiji يعني but i was like the chef where do i go <laughs> what do you want me to do <laughs> like I feel like I can be more of a Muslim in Australia than I can be in thing. Anyways, that's not the point. That I can respectfully disagree and have actual, يعني, I don't have to agree with the Sheikh Tamaman, right? Because there are going to be things that I see, one, two, and three, maybe he, the Sheikh was a bit harsh. Maybe he shouldn't have said that kalima. But, but do you see your disagreement? But do you see your disagreement as disrespectful to the Sheikh and taking the Sheikh down from his... They, from see, his, it, they see it like that because they've made him a prophet. Allah Mustan. 
Allahum stan. Right, and um, so we like, but we have nothing but love for the mashayikh. Yani every time I, every time that I've seen the sheikh, I've tried to go and kiss him, right? Because like, is is the amount of haiba that he has, how he carries himself, how he, yani I just respect the man. As a man, I respect him, right? But subhanallah, subhanallah, that the way that we treat each other, even in differing, yani with minute differences, yani I better that yani you guys are talking about. For instance, uh, taraweeh. I'm on the opinion that you can't pray. Yeah, you should, a person shouldn't pray. Yeah, uh, more than eight because Aisha, yeah. Aisha radiallahu anha, that Rasulullah didn't pray in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. Yeah, I we personally, I pray my Isha with the Imam and I bounce and I do my own taraweeh, Qiyam al layl because it's either one or the other. I have a difference of opinion in what what you guys have. I'm not going to rub issues on a fiqhi masala and make it al wala al bara on the issue. And make that you are either with me or you're not with me. And if you don't agree with me on every issue, then you, you, you're you almost like a kafir. Yani the, the mentality that we have, a lot of the brothers, is that if you're differing with someone, and if it's a, not even, if it's a legitimate difference, they don't even look at that because they have no knowledge on these issues, right? Of yani, the differences of opinions and the ways, the wasa of Islam uh, and the, the, the broad scope of Islam, the, the beauty of Islam in that sense, right? And the fact that no one is ma'asum, everyone can fall into errors. Everyone is entitled to that because no one is perfect, akhi. But the way that we deal with difference, oh, man, oh, it's unbelievable. Astaghfirullah. Allah Musa. Allah Um, Can we take a short pause if that's possible, bi'idhnillah? Maybe this has to be the end of part one and we start in part two, bi'idhnillah, next week. Inshallah, because it's literally the iqama time now for me for in Medina. We've, we've gone past the 40, inshallah. Yes, oh, think. yeah. We, it's, it's 53, bro. It's 53 minutes. So, khalas, we'll make this part one and we'll do next week, bi'idhnillah, tabaraka ta'ala. We'll continue, but we'll keep it on just this issue because there's still so much to go through. So, yeah, so, much to say. so much to say. And brother Basak, we're going to start with you next week, inshallah. I'm going to say to you what I used to say to my teacher. Sheikh, I, I, I think I'm going to be ill next week. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to me, Mother? Allah <laughs> 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 <la